right, ready? I'd like to call this meeting to order a meeting of the Plan Commission on Monday, August 9th at 6.30 p.m. in the Germantown Village Hall boardroom. This meeting has been given public notice in accordance with, with uh, Wisconsin Statutes 19.83 and Section 19.84 in such form that will apprise the general public and news media of subject matter that is intended for discussion and action. And there is also people joining us via WebEx tonight. Roll call shows all planned commissioners present. At this time, uh, if there's anyone in the audience or joining us via WebEx that would like to come forward for public input or public appearance, you're welcome to do so at this time. All I would ask is you state your name and your address for the record and come to the podium if you're with us or make your wishes known if you are joining us via WebEx. Is there anyone within our audience or online that would like to join us and come forward for public input or public appearance? Okay, then we will then go on to our next item of the agenda, which is the uh, approval of minutes from the July 12th, 2021 Plan Commission meeting. Move approval as presented. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion to approve? No discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Motion carries. Next item is new business. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to go out of order. Okay. Your motion would be? I'd like to take item C first. All right. The motion is to take new business item C ahead of the rest. Do we have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on that motion? No discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Motion carries. So we'll go to new business item C, Village of Germantown, Agent 4, Germantown Community Library, located at North 112, West 16957, Mequon Road, signed review application. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the signage as presented in the red color to match the building trim that went through GGF GGF uh, construction oversight committee earlier this evening and that was the consensus that came out of that okay we have a motion did we hear have a second okay motion made and seconded any discussion or questions no discussion all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. opposed None opposed, motion carries. Next item under new business is item A, Capstone Quadrangle Development Company, agent for MLG RMS Limited, partnership property owner of 52.5 acres at North 128 West 20943, Holy Hill Road. We have a rezoning application, A1 Agricultural Zoning District to the M1 Limited Industrial Zoning District, two lot certified survey map, and an application for a conditional use permit to allow encroachment into a 25 foot wetland and 75 foot navigable waterway setback and site plan review for 203,580 square foot industrial building. It's on, on the agenda tonight for public hearing and action. But before we go into our public hearing, we'll have some more information and background on new business item A from our community development director, Jeff Retzloff. Jeff. Thank you, Mr. President. As you indicated, Mike Faber, agent for Capstone Quadrangle Development Company, is seeking approval uh, for four development applications. I won't read those uh, at this moment, uh, but did uh, to uh, provide for development of a 50 and a half acre business park to be known as Capstone 41, located within the Holy Hill, Holy Hill Road Gateway Corridor to 41 in tax income district number the screen uh, is an image showing uh, the sanitary sewer service area expansion that was approved by the village back in 2018 that was a prerequisite development of kid eight uh, north of holy hill road but it also included south of 40 Capstone Development Parcel highlight. Next graphic shows uh, Kid 7 boundary 
red on the right is the original foundry. On the left in green is the uh, ended boundary that was approved this year by the village board. And you can see the capstone property is located in that area. Proposal is uh, to develop the 52 and a half park and requires four approvals as a prerequisite for that development, including rezoning the entire parcel from A1 agricultural to M1 industrial. Lot certified survey map to divide the property into a building parcel and some outlots. Additional use permit allow for development encroachment within 25 foot wetlands and 75 foot navigable waterway setback and site development and building plans for a 203,580 square foot industrial spec building. The details of which I will go into proceed. Uh, Here's another graphic just for some, some better context. I apologize, a lot of our aerial photography doesn't show what's on the ground today because things are happening so quickly out there. But uh, this particular graphic does show uh, area of the gateway corridor property is highlighted in red, south of Holy Hill Road. And as you can see, uh, the uh, three of the buildings in the Zilber development, the uh, gateway, uh, gateway corporate park on the north side of Holy Hill Road, including the Zilber 2, Zilber 3, and immediately south of that existing development. Again, the rezoning application uh, proposed to uh, zone the property from A1 to M1 limited industrial. It's consistent with the zoning of the properties around it, including those in TID 8 north of Holy Hill Road. Uh, it's a portion of the village's 2020 land use plan map. As you can see, the capstone property highlighted in the red in an area classified as industrial. So the rezoning to M1 industrial is consistent with classification. Proposed a certified survey map uh, divides the property uh, into actually four parcels at this point. Uh, outlet number one on the far left or west side of the property is intended for development of a stormwater basin. A uh, lot one, about 13 and a half acres, development site for the 203,580 square foot uh, spec industrial building. Outlaw 2 is an area within which the private driveway will be constructed uh, south of Gateway Crossing, effectively an extension of that road at the intersection with Holy Hill Road, uh, but it will not be a public road, it will be a private. And finally, uh, Lot 2, the, the 33 plus acres on the right of the property uh, is what I would call a uh, placeholder for future development and possible land division how that area is eventually developed. Site development and building plan, another a set of approvals that are required. Uh, this graphic shows a master a site plan for mm -hmm. the full 52 and Phase one as shown here, highlighted in yellow, 103,000 square foot uh, spec building. All the site improvements, uh, the internal drives, parking, roadway, stormwater basins, there are actually three on the site, one in outlot one, as I mentioned, one on the south side of lot small basin, and then a third basin in the far uh, southeast corner of the property on lot. Utilities will be extended to the site. Um, in fact, they're, they're there already as a result of TID 8. Phase two, which is the area in green, uh, tentatively it shows uh, two buildings uh, up to middle building 292,700 square feet uh, possible and the third building on the far right 1,500 square feet. So overall the uh, all three phases, all three buildings would total uh, just under 786,000 square feet space capstone for business park. 
Phase one site development, as I mentioned, includes the development of a stormwater basin in outlot one and uh, two other basins on the site, primary driveway and access intersection at Gateway Crossing. Uh, there will also will be a secondary access eventually on the site uh, as part of uh, phase two. This graphic, is now I've, I've tilted the site plan so I can fit it on the screen. Shows the uh, 203,580 foot square foot building site uh, includes um, 170 vehicle parking stalls on the east side of the building, which is bottom on this particular graphic, the way it's oriented, um, with space for an additional 76 uh, vehicle stalls and a total of 110 trailer stalls uh, on the side of the property. of the building renderings. I think the only difference between this and the next is the, the shadow lines, the time of the day that it's presented. This both show the uh, north corner of the site uh, from Holy Hill south into the site. Elevation renderings. Uh, the building uh, to be constructed of painted precast insulated wall panels with 36 foot high um, size with uh, 38 and 42 foot high uh, parapet wall panels uh, throughout the, uh, the building. Elevations, these graphics I'm sure are a little bit small for you to see, but uh, in your site plan, see them a bit closer up. There are 20 shipping and uh, receiving docks that are proposed part of the initial build out of the shell building with uh, room for 31 additional dock areas west. Landscaping for the site um, is shown along Holy Hill Road, the north side of the building and the outlot close-up of that particular area. Some minimal landscaping shown on the west side of the uh, trailer court parking area, and also additional landscaping on the, uh, the vehicle parking area and the private driveway site. Far south end of the, uh, the building is an area set aside for future, the future parking, vehicle parking stalls. Uh, there is landscaping associated with that around the perimeter and that will be installed initially as part of the uh, site uh, build out for phase. Far southern portion on this graphic, the stormwater basin showing some additional landscape. Included in your packet were some uh, renderings, photo simulations of the landscaping in front of uh, along Holy Hill Road on this particular uh, rendering, it shows uh, the landscaping in the upper left uh, tended to show the landscaping at the size that it's planted when it's planted and the graphic in the rendering size of the landscaping after five to six years. Quickly go through additional rendering different uh, conditions. Again, the same relation with the lighting plan uh, that was included proposes uh, uh, minimal lighting across the site. Um, building mounted, uh, 18 building mounted fixtures at a height of 32 feet uh, around the, uh, the building at all elevations. Uh, and six pole mounted uh, fixtures at a height of 25 feet in the uh, trailer court parking area west side of the building. All of the fixtures are the same, a lot LED cutoff type. The last um, permit or approval that's required a commission encroachment into the 25 foot wetland and 75 foot navigable waterway setback. Um, Given the, the amount of known wetlands uh, on the property to the south, the MMSD property, uh, wetland delineation was done. Uh, this 
that with the wetlands highlighted in purple. They're predominantly a perimeter, the west and south edges, southeast corner along the east side property. The development proposal is to impact area within the village's enforced 25 foot wetland and 75 foot navigable waterway setbacks. As talked about this many times, the village requires those setbacks above and beyond what the deep requirements are. In this case, there are there's no proposal to impact any actual wetlands. There's wetland filling proposed as part of the development. There's just encroachment into the village's 25 foot wetland and 75 foot waterway setbacks. As this graphic shows, uh, as exhibit from the uh, nation a plan that was provided as part of the CUP application shows orange the areas that are 25 foot wetland and 75 foot setbacks that are to be encroached by some uh, form of development. 0.891 acres are to be impacted across the site. Developer is proposing to mitigate that impact by providing 2.232 acres of air with um, restoration of the impacted areas, uh, plantings, stormwater basin plantings that uh, exceeds the amount required. In fact, um, the uh, mitigation requirement of 1.782 acres the two to one ratio of the area impacted, the developer is uh, proposing to the mitigate 2.5 to one uh, ratio of the area. Some additional staff comments, uh, as made clear in the application and in the staff report, Capstone Quadrangle is requesting approval of the phase one site and building plan. Foods. Uh, farm structures and site stabilization, construction of the 203,580 foot, square foot industrial spec building, the parking, stormwater basins, all three of them, uh, and landscaping across the L lot and lot number one, uh, and also construction of the Holy Hill Road driveway intersection and private south from that stabilization along the southern site uh, over to the third stand that section will be installed and constructed again as part of phase one. Any future land division or development um, require additional site plan review and by the planning commission. Zoning that's uh, been proposed, as I mentioned, is consistent with our 2020 land use. Um, Landscaping, we talked about this in the recent July for the consultation. Staff is of the opinion that the landscaping and berm that are proposed along Holy Hill Road on the west side of the building uh, and along the west side of the, the trailer court parking area is inadequate. Uh, uh, slightly since you saw it in July uh, to include but it's additional uh, berming extending the almost the full length of the area. It varies in height, feet. Um, generally, given the first floor elevation of the building, 915, the planned uh, center line elevation of the reconstructed Holy Hill Road also at a height at elevation of 915. The, the berm with a maximum height of um, 918 along the middle portion. 21 staff's opinion provides just a, a min very minimal amount of, of berming affect any sort of, of helping the visual screening of the bulk or massiveness of the building itself. Um, additional comments, uh, th there wasn't a roof plan provided. It's a spec building, it's gonna be a shell building construction. So the location of uh, HVAC units on the roof, if any, uh, has is yet to be determined. 
staff is recommending that uh, that issue be resolved at the time each tenant comes in for zoning permit approval, a, a screen uh, roof plan and a possible screening plan would be required at that time. Zoning permits are typically staff uh, level of review and approval. However, as we discuss the conditions of approval tonight, if the planning commission wants to see those with each tenant. Uh, same issue with dumpster details. There, there aren't any because they're done an issue uh, to be resolved at the zoning permit approval level. Height fixture mounting height. The full mounting fixture shown at a height of 25 feet would be recommended uh, height um, under the lighting guidelines. The building height of 30 feet higher staff is 25 feet. Uh, Public Works and the Village Engineer has reviewed all of the uh, engineering plans, grading, stormwater, management, et cetera. Um, they do have a number of outstanding technical issues um, that are identified in a, a July 29th memo uh, from the Public Works Director. They have received additional revised plans and documents addressing those items, but we have not had sufficient time to view those and to report back uh, to the plan commission this evening. However, uh, the village engineer has plans that they have re reviewed to date um, to show that the site construction is feasible as proposed um, with minor plan corrections and uh, technical uh, corrections required in the stormwater management and grading plans. Those again will be reviewed in the next week or so by staff. I should point out that with regard to stormwater management, um, the site uh, ponds um, collectively have been designed to accommodate uh, potential runoff from the future holy construction. So there is that element of uh, as part of the review. With all of that said, the staff recommendation uh, recommendations are as follows. Uh, to approve the rezoning as proposed, A1 agricultural to M1 industrial for the 52 and a half acre site. Approve the uh, two lot certified survey map with the two outlots for uh, the 52 and a half acre property subject to one condition uh, that some minor technical items addressed at PSM prior to reporting. Site development and building plans. A staff recommendation is to approve the site development and building plans. Uh, for the proposed development on lot one and the other associated phase one development, um, including the 203,580 square foot industrial building, um, subject to 11 conditions. Uh, those are in the staff report and we can go through them and see fit. And finally, uh, to approve uh, the conditional use permit to allow the encroachment and development into portions of the 25 foot wetland and 75 foot navigable waterway setbacks along with the proposed compensation as presented in the wetland mitigation plan narrative dated July 16th, uh, subject to three conditions. That, and before we go to public hearing, um, Mike Faber is here representing the Capstone Quadrangle. Mike, you have uh, share at this point. Okay, we can go to public hearing and then we can do that after if you like. And uh, for those that may have not heard, uh, the, the choice would be to um, uh, give some comments to uh, some points that were made in the presentation and uh, he'll, the person that's representing Capstone will do that uh, after we have the public hearing. So thank you. All right, then I will open this public hearing by hereby stating a notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held before the Village of Germantown Plan Commission at the Germantown Village Hall located on Mequon Road in Germantown and virtually through the WebEx platform on the following date of Monday, August 9th at 6.30 p.m. or later. 
The purpose of said hearings is to hear any and all parties, their attorneys or agents for or against the following applications filed by the applicant for. Number one, a rezoning from A1 Agricultural Zoning District to the M1 Limited Industrial Zoning District pursuant to section 17.33 of the Village Zoning Code. And number two, a conditional use permit to encroach into the 25 foot wetland setback and the 75 foot navigable water way setback pursuant to section 24.04 subsection three subparagraph C subparagraph five of the village zoning code for the property described below. The applicant is Capstone Development Company, agent for MLG RMS Limited Partnership, property owner. Property is located at North 128 West 20943 Holy Hill Road. This time I'll ask that anyone that is wishing to come forward can do so to speak for or against the rezoning application or the conditional use for the wetland setback or the navigable waterway setback. I did receive one uh, communication via uh, email, but I see that the person that sent it to me is in the audience. Are you wishing to come forward to, to state uh, what you said in the email uh, at this hearing? Okay, then uh, anyone wishing to come forward, please come to the podium and state your name and your address for the record. Just to qualify as um, how you're coming forward, uh, Trustee Miller, are you coming forward to represent yourself as a trustee or as a resident? As a trustee. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, Plan Commission. Um, I'm coming before you um, as village trustee um, to speak out against the encroachment of the 25-foot wetland and 75-foot navigable waterway setback in this proposal. Proposal. Um, I will always speak out against any project that's going to encroach into the 25 foot wetland and navigable water setback. Plan Commission and the Village Board recently turned down Taco Bell because it was going to encroach the 25 foot setback. Today's agenda, Plan Commission to send the same me message to Capstone as it did to Taco Bell. Wetlands are a natural area to improve water. Wetlands can intercept runoff from surface surfaces prior to reaching open water and remove chemical and biological. This is a natural that we have for our wells that feed the water towers that supply water for residential and commercial properties in the village of Germantown. Every time you encroach upon the wetlands, you are minimizing the natural filtration system in Germantown. All the businesses that want to expand in the village of Germantown water. All the village of Germantown water comes from wells don't utilize the natural fil filtration system wetlands, the village of Germantown will have to install costly filtration systems at each well. Who's going to pay for this? Businesses that are trying to expand in the village of Germantown or the residents. To me, it makes no business sense, economical sense, or ecological sense to cover up or diminish the wetlands in the village as a whole. Water is not a commodity. Water is a valuable resource. Some local companies want to expand here in Germantown because of the quality and the availability of water as it is used as an ingredient. Let's be very protective of our greatest natural resource that is finite, water. Let's not destroy the current natural filtration system that we all live And it's at no cost to any business, the village, or residents. Capstone could adjust the building so that they don't encroach upon the wetlands. Perhaps they are putting their customer into the wrong space on the property. Perhaps the space is too big. Who is going to make the annual assessment of the wetlands? If they end up destroying the wetlands, will they have to tear down the parking lot? Damage to the wetlands will already be done. 
our wetlands are be the village systems. I am sure that Capstone and the Plan Commission can agree it would not make economic sense to destroy a living asset to improve the quality of water. I think we need to caution ourselves here and stop allowing businesses and residential developments from encroaching on all the wetlands in the village of Germantown. The wetlands are protecting and filtering the greatest resource that we have at absolutely no cost. So I encourage the plan commission here tonight to be up to allow the encroachment to the wetland. And I'd like to thank um, President Walter for your quick response. And I do understand that wetlands are not necessarily, it is, um, it is vegetation and it doesn't necessarily have to be wet. It's filtration system made of hydric soil. So with that, I really appreciate your consideration. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming forward. Is there anyone else that wishes to come forward to speak for or against the rezoning application, agricultural zoning to the M1 limited industrial or uh, for or against the uh, conditional use permit to encroach upon a 25 foot setback, wetland setback or the 75 foot navigable waterway setback? Anyone wishing to come forward to speak for or against, sir? I'm gonna need you to come forward, sir, so we everybody that's watching can hear you too. We appreciate you coming forward. The question, in regards to the size of the road or in regards to just traffic overall? Recently, there's a rate of semi trucks going slowly falling apart the road. Mm -hmm. It's overtaxed. What's going to happen to Holy Hill Road? Part of a Holy Hill Road will be rebuilt from Goldendale up until the freeway using some of the monies that uh, were borrowed for, for the TIF. Well, as soon as some of the other heavier construction is finished around, it wouldn't pay too much to put it in now if, with the construction trucks that are going in and out of there because they'll tear it up more than the, than the semis right now. Are there any plans what's going to be a four lane or? I, I haven't seen any final engineering plans, but perhaps Planner Retzloff can, can enlighten us. Yeah, they're, they're conceptual plans or 30% plans that have been prepared to date for a four lane divided facility to be constructed in 2022 next year i don't believe they're they're complete they're complete at this point again they're about 30 percent no well no, four lanes good. divided and you have egress and degress lanes for truck traffic going in and out of the out of the business park so it it will be better than it is now but it's no need for it to go pushed all the way down to 145 at that size it really only needs to go from goldendale road up until the expressway That is the plan, yes. Thank you for coming forward, sir. Is there anyone else that wishes to come forward at this time to speak for or against the rezoning application uh, for, the, uh, for the land or for the conditional use permit to encroach upon the 25-foot wetland setback or the 75-foot navigable waterway setback? Anyone wishing to come forward to speak for or against, or is anyone joining us via WebEx that would like to uh, say something at this public hearing? One last time, is there anyone wishing to come forward to speak for or against? All right, then this public hearing is now closed. That would then take us to the new business item A for plan commission action. Board?
Make a motion to approve the rezoning of approximately 52.5 acres from A1 Agricultural to M1 Limited Industrial as proposed. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Do you have anything to bring forward in regards to the zoning itself or the conditions that are as part of the zoning? Can you put those up there? No conditions of zoning. Condition, conditional use. Okay, yours is more for conditional use. And site plan. And site oh, plan. site plan only. Okay, then then I just wanted to check and make sure. All right. Uh, any discussion on the motion to approve? No discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. One opposed. Next item. Make a motion to approve the two lot certified survey map for the 52.5 acre property subject to the one condition as presented. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve the certified survey map. Any discussion on that motion to approve? No discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? One opposed. Motion carries. Next item. I make a motion to approve the conditional use permit to allow the encroachment of development into portions of the 25 foot wetland and 75 foot navigable waterway setback as proposed with the three conditions. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. So, Shesky. I got a, uh, a question. I know there's an encroachment in the waterway and there's, there's some mitigation uh, for that. Where is the mitigation occurring? It's a, a ratio of two to one, right? So we're losing an acre when theoretically we're gaining two? Uh, the proposed mitigation ratio is two and a half to one. Oh. And the areas within which the mitigation will be provided are, is shown on the screen. It's a, exhibit B to the um, mitigation plan narrative. It's generally the the yellowish green green areas that are shown on the on the graphic basically along along the uh, existing 25 foot wetland setback area and around the stormwater basins that's left can you zoom in on tension ponds because it's hard to see the patterning uh, I I can try I don't think I Shesky, you still have the floor. So, I'm, this is North is still up here, correct? Yes. At the top. So we're encroaching I, I, again. I'm having a, maybe a hard time with the color differentiation. There's kind of a lime color and more of a darker green. So the lime is what we're losing, and the dark green is what we're gaining. No. Um, let me go back. The, the the first exhibit, this exhibit, shows in the in the orange color. The area where the impact is is occurring, and then the, yes, that's th those are portions of the twenty five foot and, and seventy foot navigable setbacks where some development activity is taking place. In most cases, what's happening is is the grade is being changed, um, and then after the grade has been changed to accommodate the uh, stormwater basin or the parking area then um, native plantings are being installed in those those areas as well as additional area around the stormwater basins shown in the green on this exhibit and the, the concept for the mitigation is is consistent with what we've seen and approved in the past i mean the intention of, of our setback requirements above and beyond what the dnr uh, requires is essentially to uh, provide for some additional um, buffering protection, if you will, uh, in the form of typically it's native plantings, you know, wetland friendly vegetation of some sort. In some cases, it's removal of invasive species as part of that process. 
And I know there's a monitoring component of native species planting. Uh, I know we've been doing this now, the quid pro quo for the trade-off and loss of wetlands. What's the success rate of uh, the replanting with the native species? You know, there's a, there's a burn plan in there. There's a cutting plan, which I thought kind of puzzling because you're supposed to cut it down to like a foot in June when the plants are really kind of budding out. Uh, which, I, again, I found that puzzling, but just anecdotally, Jeff, what, I mean, can you talk about that? Our typical um, monitoring report requirement is for three years. Mm -hmm. and, and the reports we get show that, yes, they've followed through and they've done the plantings or they've done the cuttings. Um, and that generally they're successful in what they're what they're proposing because they're they're not proposing significant alterations. We're not we never received any sort of mitigation that includes the recreation of a wetland, if you will. That would be very difficult to do, and and uh, that is not part of our our process. We don't re regulate through this. Um, any impact to actual wetlands where that kind of level of mitigation might be required. The reconstruction of, of uh, a wetland somewhere on site or more typically the purchase of credits in a wetland bank elsewhere in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, that's for wetland filling. That's not for this process. Uh, we just, we, we assess whether or not um, the encroachment is um, at a, at, a, at a point three feet or lower, some minimal grading. In that case, we only require compensation at a one to one ratio. Anything over three feet, um, we require two to one. The developer has gone right to the, we're gonna give you two and a half to one compensation and this is where we're gonna provide it along the edges of the uh, setback area or the wetlands that have some level of encroachment and then enhancing around the stormwater basins as well. Further discussion. Is it, is it easy to say, or it, based on what you've seen in that drawing, each of the, of the retention ponds are are part of of what that encroachment is within that area, mostly except for that little parking lot area. Are each of the you know where we're where we're actually encroaching upon mostly in in the uh, wetland setback or navigable water is in in regards to where the retention ponds are except for that one bottom corner yes except for that area right, right there where you can see there's there's some portion of the Okay, so in, in those areas, um, it's changing the slope and then planting, planting more native grasses to help uh, slow any, any runoff that might occur in those areas. But in most cases, any runoff that's coming off of the hard surfaces is being directed to the retention ponds where it's held and suspended particles are then removed and then it gets into uh, the natural waterway as it, as it kind of eases its way out. Correct. Now, Mike, you have an engineer uh, who's listening in could he jump in and, and address that question and maybe tell us how much runoff is expected to, to head towards that small um, stormwater basin and those wetland areas? Are you there, Adam? This is Werner. I believe Adam had to drop off. Unfortunately. Okay, is there somebody representing Capstone who can address that question? Not Adam. Dale, is that you? Yeah, I am here. Um, I can't speak to the volume of the water. I'm the landscape architect who worked on the on the mitigation plan, but I can tell you the majority of the water or all of the water that's actually coming off the site is designed to go to the stormwater basins. 
it's not designed to dump into the wetlands or any of those areas. Okay. Okay. Got to come to the microphone. Thank you. Favor with him, quadrangle, seventeen to. Question: The cutting aspect as escape by the initial stages that plants that do. So you have to cut the stuff because it's a serious uh, it takes about three years to put down deeper roots. So you cut them, they'll come back essentially more than seeding and spreading. So if you do that on an established Thank you. Sure. Further discussion on the motion to approve the conditional use permit. Mr. Kimler. Question process. Going over spoiled sediment and stuff like that. So, for commercial projects, the uh, Department of Public Works, uh, an engineer in the in the department, uh, is responsible for going out and inspecting to ensure that the erosion control is is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Is there more? Wetland areas. In the site stabilization plan included in the packet, there's information on the mitigation measures. Um, Mike, I don't know if your your folks can explain what those are in respect to the wetland areas. Further discussion on the motion to approve conditional use permit. No further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? One opposed. Motion carries. Next item. I'll make a motion to approve the site development and building plans for development proposed by Capstone Quadrangle for the proposed lot one of the Capstone 41 Business Park on Holy Hill Road, including a 203,580 square foot industrial distribution center and associating parking, internal driveways, stormwater management, and water and sanitary sewer improvements subject to the 11 conditions as presented. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion on the motion to approve the site plan. You're up. One of those has to do with the says that height of the considerably north to 
or in a semi truck. Semi trucks are. But I understand. Bound traffic on Bully Hill. So no one turns they pass the building. Bound traffic. Height difference is there. Large area. Look at it from the size of the symbol that's there. Looks like some tree. You look at the tree west tree. Birds next three eastern white pine trees. A more white there's three little five eastern white it's a lot of trees and set that landscape plan looks like there's a small symbol cases it just put it's healthy because they can meet with each other Mike Ritzoff Mike could you could you explain a little bit more in detail you mentioned the no mow turf area which would be pretty much all the area around the trees and shrubs that are to be planted that that area is going to reach a height of 5 to 6 feet My, my familiarity with no more turf is typical along the interstate interchange areas where it's maybe a foot to two feet high at the highest point in the in the summer. But why then are we planting shrubs that will never get to be six feet high um, 
in an area that's going to be surrounded by no more turf that will be five to six feet high. Could, could I jump in real quick, Mike? It's no more turf that'll get by. So, clarify. Hey, Mike, could I jump in here real quick? I, I'm having a hard time hearing you, but the no mow that's out along the road will only get about a foot high and then kind of slump over and fall over. The, the parts that are going to get five to six feet high are the native plantings around the, the basins. Coming from the west. Yep. From, from the west around the basins, those native plantings will get five to six feet tall. And the Nomo itself out along the, the berm area will get about a foot high. Thank you, Dale. Yep. I, I've known that you've given us uh, these, these stills of what it might look like now versus five years there was a a point of contention on a an earlier development that we had along mequon road and how much visibility would be seen uh, of the of the large expanse of wall that would be running in in parallel to mequon road and at that time the developer was able to give us a uh, kind of a moving visual or a virtual uh view of what that would look like if you were driving from east to west or if you're driving from west to east and what you would actually see at Kind of a, a five year grow out is is that possible for you to to present or or to because a lot of people are visual and sometimes it takes that point uh to see what it would actually look like as a car driving down that road we we can provide that okay quick answer i like that when when do I want it? Well, uh, I approve this or after I approve this. You can uh, you can approve it up to the point of of seeing that for the landscaping and hold the final approval on the landscaping up until that point if that's what you would choose to do, or you could leave it to the discretion of of the planner to to make sure that it uh, it meets his satisfaction for what he's looking to achieve there. Yes, I would just point out condition number ten addresses this matter and the last sentence that are, requires a revised landscape and berm plan be prepared and submitted to the plan commission for review and approval prior to issuance of an initial occupancy permit yeah. for the building. There you go. Further discussion. Was there another point that you had? Yes. Now seeing the renderings where see the sun angles, state of the art. something gear high contrast material consistent with what said across the street see colors dielectric dielectric 
So I view our design superior to some other recent buildings. Tell you that our philosophy philosophy on temporary look subtle rather that's what we achieved. It's not an easy thing to simply take it. Or if you're a of that kind. Werner, can you unmute yourself? Uh, I am unmuted. I'm sorry, we're having audio issues, not really hearing testimony from the podium. Um, tried chatting a couple of things out there, but apparently they're going into the Ethernet or something. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear a question if there was one. Our concern with uh, the thought that the recommendation from the staff is to add more. And my comment was that that's a touchy thing. The, anything you do needs to be consistent with the philosophy of the design as it stands. We already did add more reveals in a manner that is consistent from the last time that the plan commission saw our elevations. Um, do you have any other insights or explanation of what the design philosophy is currently and why as, a, as an architect you're satisfied with it and think that it, it, it meets the necessary interest and an articulation on the exterior. Um, sure, I think um, a big issue is obviously trying to call attention and hold attention at the entry points. And I think that's been adequately done. What we generally look to do with kind of the field uh, portions of the walls is to allow them to be a backdrop to the, the main features. We usually, uh, in, uh, include some secondary features to break up that mask that massing along the length. I feel that's been adequately done for the this building, the size of it, et cetera. Um, I think there, uh, I mean, a, a perception as you're driving by is certainly different than than looking at a rendering or you, you know, even worse, looking at you know just a building elevation, a static building elevation. Um, obviously the the rendering or the uh, elevation certainly would have been better served if we had included the landscaping along the walls, et cetera, so that it's a little more uh, realistic to what someone would see. That's always a little bit of a problem in presenting, you know, just flat, flat elevations. And therefore the rendering was used to help to show some of that. But even there, the, uh, you know, the landscaping is not exactly a hundred percent in line with Dale's design. Thank you, Werner. The other comment I'll make about what we're doing with the uh, exterior facades of the building is just about everything that you can do with precast panels. So we were hoping that the rendering would help convey um, you can have panel heights vary to help break up the building. We've got three different heights of the panels as you go around the building and you see that more distinct, distinctly in the elevations. Um, we're also overlapping panels so that that helps break up the texture. To some extent, the panel overlaps cause problems for tenants. They don't like that because production lines are straight. They don't have curves or jogs. Uh, racking systems want straight walls and straight runs for uh, forklifts. Um, uh, so we're doing some of that, but we have to be careful how much uh, 
in and out of the wall of the building we do, or it'll be a negative to our prospects of trying to lease the building up. And um, uh, finally, side with ski. So I'll agree with most of what you said. Um, in my experience with these type of buildings, yes, all we're doing is overlapping panel over panel and trying to do something with color and texture. I think what I would like to see enhanced is the entrance itself. There's where it's more of an office facility. It's more of entrance. Um, what I got out of our survey is maybe if we simply put some type of a canopy, a three-dimensional element that sticks out, not just a horizontal plane that's hung off of guy wires or tie wires, but something a little more substantial that brings more interest to that corner. This is that corner more. The wall, I agree with you. The wall is the wall is the wall. That's about all we can do to it. I do recognize that you change the color from the original color to get more of an earth tone. The renderings are god awful gray colors, but the elevations are god awful gray, but your renderings and color samples go to more of a taupe or more of a brown earth tone color. So I appreciate that. Just if there's a way we can enhance the entrances just a little bit more. That's what I'd be looking for. Further discussion? Are you looking for it with a motion or just as a suggestion? What do I want to do? I will I will make that a motion that the I was just going to read comment number eight and then maybe you want to amend that in some way or delete it and start over. Comment eight reads additional reveals and or articulation should be included in the design. Great color scheme is acceptable, but should be enhanced to ensure the colors or tone differences are not too evenly matched and indistinguishable. So if you're going in a different direction with. No entrance enhancements. Then yeah. we probably should delete this, and you can start over. No, because you you are what I read here is you are generally accepting what they've got because they have changed the gray color palette to more of the earth tones, and the panels are evenly matched and indistinguishable are are, are distinguishable because of the colors. Uh, I would make a motion to amend item number eight to require. Additional articulation at the entrance ways of each tenant space with an element similar to a canopy structure over the doorways. Hard canopy or soft canopy? See, I, I look at what was presented in the uh, survey and what people did accept was a more interesting entrance element for these big warehouses. The one in particular that was in the photograph was a central entrance, had a lot more interest along the entrance. With, an, with a corner entrance on both ends, I can do something interesting on both ends. I'm not sure if there's going to be a central element on the long side. Somewhat of an element. Then you'd put something at that entrance that's also higher articulation, higher interest. Can it be as simple as a canopy? That's not giving me the substance that I'm looking for. 
I'm thinking this needs to be a solid element with thickness to it, with depth to it, with some structural supports to it, to give it a presence at the corner. Yeah, but I don't want to do the architect's job of designing this building. I think the architect knows what substantial means and a simple canvas awning is not a substantial entrance feature. Well, you said canopy, so I just wanted the definition of it. You're seeing here, this is considered the main entrance? One of them. I get a second tenant, it's all the way at the far end, a little tiny thing right by the edge of the screen. It's about there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm responding to what we're hearing from the community. However, Mr. Faber has been here for just a year now, trying to get this thing through, and we, I don't wanna move the goalposts at the last minute. That's why I don't want to do that. But resp re respecting what our residents have said, I think that's a little gesture that we can do to get closer to what the residents want to recognize we gave them this direction a year ago. This is your motion to amend? Yes. On item A? Yes. Do we have a second? Second. Yes. All right, motion to amend it. And uh, seconded, any discussion on that motion? Everybody clear on, on what it's asking for? I'm a little, I'm a little gray on it. You, you're opening the door for some change that you want to see yet. You know, again, I, I, I'm not sure what you want to see. I'm a visual guy. I, I know, and I am left-handed. I work out of the other side of my brain. I agree with you, but. <laughs> In my line of work, I'm opposed to this board telling me exactly what to draw and be having to go so back. So am I, but I'm, I'm trying to get an idea of, you know, because when I look at this and I see, I see that corner, I see an entrance because it's, it's different than anything else that, that's on there. And, it, you know, you've got the, the glass that's there. You've got the, you know, the, the broader expanse of, of that opening on both corners. You've got a, a, a demarcation of color. That's distinct from any of the other panels. The the human scale is missing at the entrance door. The protection from rain and inclement weather is missing at the entrance door. And that's where a canopy does both of those things. It brings you down to a human scale and it protects you when you're standing at the door trying to open it, futzing with your keys, trying to get in the door. There's that. And I think that element would help soften this building a little bit more and bring a little bit more character that look at the image that people responded to in our survey more of an ornate entrance and i'm just trying to dress up that entrance just a little bit i like the color change i like how it breaks up the walls as it goes down um, and the different areas of, of where it's a different color that I appreciate. It doesn't have to be that way, but I appreciate that it, it's being done to help break up the expanse. I like the bump outs uh, because I've heard those types of remarks made in the, in the past of, of, of trying to break up that large wall. And I, I see a lot of that there and I see some different ones as you go down, whether it's bumped in or bumped out. Um, so all that that's positive. Um, I don't know what what that adds uh, to the project or what it may do to the to the entrance. Um, how do you want to see it, and how does that affect the approval of, of the motion of of the of the site plan for tonight? I this one you don't put it has to come back to plan commission. No, I didn't. I didn't stipulate that, but um, uh, you can certainly add that if you want. I said, and this one he did. Director Retzloff didn't put that it has to come back to Planning Commission, so I would have to add that in. Um, I'm going to leave it 
to a staff level review. I'll be happy to come in and meet with staff to see what it is. Does everybody else want to see it as well? I'm just going to leave my comment there and add to the amendment that it should be a staff level review. Volunteer my time. This is at both entrances, assuming both are constructed at some point or just the northeast corner that we see here on at, the graphic? At an entrance. So if it's one entrance, it's at the entrance. If it's two entrances, it's two entrances. If there's a third tenant, dress up that third and dress up the entrances. Further discussion on the motion to amend. No. Main entrance to a tenant space. Your microphone on, Bill? No. Oh, you haven't been here in a while, so you we got new microphones. When the light's on, it means it's off. It's opposite. You gotta push hard. There, there you go. go. Nope. Wait. You had it. Now there you're on. So do we need to add anything to your to motion again? Or you know, what's no. the motion? All right. I don't motion. Um uh President Walter, to your comment about the ins and outs and what does that do, it's strictly a functionality of the inside floor space. Like Mr. Faber said, the tenants want a straight wall. I'm putting racking on, I'm putting a drive lane down there, I'm putting something else that wants to be linear. The ins and outs aren't horrendously troublesome because they take the innermost line and that becomes their straight line. They will have gapping behind shelving. They will have widening of drive lanes, walk lanes. With shelving, stuff may fall off the back and get stuck behind the back of shelving. That's the biggest downfall. What it also does is if you do have shelving, a high pile storage system, it gives you a space for uh, fire protection piping that goes into high pile storage. So it's a trade off, but I think we've all become accustomed to the ins and outs because everywhere we go, we get the same comment. Give me some more articulation and this is what we do. So I'm fine with the rest of the building if we can dress up entrances. Okay, further discussion on a motion to amend. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Aye. Opposed, raise your hand. Two opposed, motion carries. Back to the motion as amended. Further discussion? This would be for the site plan as presented plus the amendment. No further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. One opposed, motion carries. Takes care of all items under new business item A. We appreciate uh, your time here tonight. We appreciate your colleagues uh, on online as well to support. Thank you. Thank you. Next item under new business is new business item B, Home Path Financial LP, property owner of 2.33 acres on Bittersweet Trail, out lot, oh, I'm sorry, out lot CSM 4988. Uh, point, and it's a four lot certified survey map to create four single family lots as part of the Heritage Park North subdivision. Give us more information and background on this item. We'll turn the meeting back over to our community development director, Jeff Retzoff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Home Path Financial has assumed the ownership of properties that comprise the Heritage Park North subdivision flat area. Back in April of 2019. Heritage Park North received flat approval. Five lot single family subdivision. Subdivision flat included 31 lots. A CSM was planned for four lots at the end of Bittersweet Trail as an subdivision. At that time, the CSM separate developers together to process 
Path Financial has assumed ownership of both areas and is following through tying up the lots in this case. Approval of the four lot certified survey map is uh, the part of the development of the trail shown in the uh, CSD plans. Staff recommendation is to approve the four lot CSM subject to two conditions. Those are issues and corrections identified memo by our surveyor and also uh, requiring a note be added to the CSD stating that the four potential lots are subject to the map which park north subdivision is pending review final approval question what was it what was it before what what's changed as previous, I remember the lot lines lining up more than what they do there, meaning from, you know, backyards to backyards, we're kind of matching. Now it seems to be offset a little bit. Better than mine. I don't have a copy of the, the previous proposed um, CSM, but I, but I do know the CSM has changed. Okay. And does that cons is that then considered an RS five or an RS four in lot size for each of those? The zoning is, is still the same. It's RS five. This is the this is the same four lot CSM. It wasn't three lots and it wasn't five, but the same four lots that were proposed as part of the plat. that had some level of approval prior to that any between the uh, with the uh, lot layout and regions consistent consistent with the CSD Can you go back to the the chose the four again what is the elevation difference from the front of those lots to the back No grading. Has always been my concern in, in this area. Um, there is uh, a drainage easement that runs back behind the lots behind Larkspur Lane. And full disclosure, the reason I know that is I live there. My house is on lot number 47. Um, but we've always stressed that uh, as long as the drainage doesn't change or or create more water than what sits there now, I, I don't think anybody's against it. They just don't want future water issues based on a higher elevation and how it's kind of draining. Because it used to drain to it, and then it used to go um, to the south into the into the uh, kind of the navigable stream area in that wetland area in the corner of Revere and Division Road. 10 foot drainage easement. <clears throat> because you got 30 feet of these four lots plus the 10 feet that's on existing lots. Okay. Make a motion to approve the four lot certified survey map to extend the Peter Sweet Trail right of way to the south and to create four residential lots as part of the Heritage Park North subdivision, subject to the two conditions as presented. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion to approve? Okay. No comments from the representative. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. Motion carries. Thank you for coming. Next item under new business. We've already done C, so we'll go to D, which is Lemberg Electric, agent for turnkey solutions and MCPRE1 LLC, property owner at North 117 West 19345 Fulton Drive, a sign review application. Director Retzloff. 
uh, you may recall uh, back in April of this year, the Planning Commission approved a thousand square foot addition to the Planning Solutions. At this time, they requested approval of signs. Comprised of flush mounted uh, painted letter, acrylic letters, will not be illuminated. And the west locations for the building. On the north side, the sign area is slightly larger, 81 square feet. West, 21. Staff recommendation is to approve the signs. Make a motion to, to approve the proposed wall signs for turnkey solutions as presented with these conditions. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion to approve? Mr. Williams. Jeff, the, the code says that wall signs are only allowed on a building frontage. Um, yet the staff comment says that the pros, proposed wall signs meet village signage requirements. So if we're putting it on two sides, how does that meet the, uh, only on one side of the building requirement? With the, with the corner lot, there's Deem necessary. In this case, staff is supporting the proposal. Um, 81 square feet on the north elevation, which is facing the street. They have access to both streets, frankly, from the building. So, as Pat said, staff didn't see a problem. Again, subject to the planning commission latitude. And Further discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. Motion carries. Last item of new business is item E, Lemberg Electric, agent for Shore West Realtors, Inc., property owner located at North 112 West 17847, Mequon Road, sign review. Minor Retzel. Uh, this is a request for revised uh, location. Call back in January this year. Shore West Realtor site on Mequon Road. Bring along with them this existing sign. Bed. It happens to be the location where the previous sign line of the sign was located. Property owner. But in this case, they're proposing to add the west side of the drive and allow Mequon to proceed along it and put it in place. Yeah. Have the elevation of the landscaping around the elevation there as well as place it. Staff recommendation is to approve the proposal. Subject to three conditions. It's a good thing because it's already there. <laughs> I will make a motion to approve the monument sign for Shore West Realty. Conditions as presented in the new location. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on a motion to approve? Question for you, Jeff. Landscaping. Is there a landscaping plan? Third condition is to submit a revised landscape plan. Staff. My concern is that close to a driveway. Snow plowing is going to bury the base of this. Salt on the driveway is going to kill everything in that planting bed. Need to see some substantial planting of salt well the, the sign location if you if you take a close look i i had a similar concern um is about six feet off the edge of the path and it is actually up on a higher elevation than the drop so the plantings themselves are going to be somewhat on the slope 
same concerns given to see flowers in sight in the ocean. With your direction, we'll plan or something that you'd like us to keep in mind. Deal Again, with that. You unless you want to see it, see it yourself, um, escape plan. You can put put up around the base, you know, a slight elevation with an escaping block. And Again, if you want to shoot it by me, I'll look at it and if I have any concerns, I just I'm concerned that everything you plant is going to be dead. It's replanted every spring. If that's the scheme is to replant it every spring. I'm fine with that. <laughs> it just becomes annuals. It's not perennials. <laughs> and maybe that's all right. Similar so could, Kim, there are there salt, salt tolerant bushes that you can put in there. That can really, I mean, I haven't seen anything. Okay. Spireas. Appreciate that. All right. Any further discussion on a motion to approve? Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None opposed. Motion carries. Takes care of all items on tonight's agenda under new business and all items as listed on tonight's agenda. All that leaves is announcements. I do have one announcement to make. Uh, tomorrow night, Tuesday, August 10th, from 5 to 8 p.m., is the Germantown Night Out. Uh, for the uh, Germantown Police Department and Germantown Fire Department. This year, it's going to be held at Fireman's Park. In past years, it's always been held at the uh, at the police building, but they've changed the venue to Fireman's Park. So 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. They have uh, several demonstrations that are going on. The police at 6.15 is going to have a taser demonstration. They're looking for volunteers. Uh, at 7.15, they have canine demonstration. Yeah, sure. You put on the suit. Germantown Fire Department at 545 will have a simulated building burn and at 645 we'll have a vehicle extrication. They're going to have um, various activities with members of the police and fire department and live music by Bright Eyed Productions. Child ID cards will be provided by the Germantown Police and Washington County Sheriff Departments. Everyone attending will receive a free raffle tickets. Tickets may be used to win items that are donated from the community supporters. And you can receive additional tickets for each non-perishable food item that you donate to benefit the St. Boniface Food Pantry, up to three tickets per person. They're also giving away free bike helmets while supplies last. Uh, children must be present to receive a helmet. And then there's complimentary hot dogs, chips, water, custards while supplies last. So please uh, come if you have time, but also remember that this year it's at Fireman's Park and we hope to see you all there. That's all I have for announcements, unless somebody else has something else. If not, then we are adjourned. Thank you all for coming tonight and thank you all for watching. Have a good night.